So Redis stands for Remote Dictionary Service, so R-E-D-I. Yes, and basically it is just a database that is about uh, looking up some value based on some key, right? Just like a dictionary is. You can look up the definition of a word based on knowing what that word is, right? So you have a key, the word, and you have a value, the definition of that word that you look up in the dictionary. Um, so again, this is a key value data store, but has some additional features like these data structures of lists, sets, hashes, and uh, ordered sets, and a couple of other things. And also Redis allows us to do some basic set operations like union, uh, intersection, and difference. Uh, but we don't really get uh, very much uh, in the way of uh, analytical functions beyond just these basic set theory operators. So as we mentioned before, Redis is very fast, measured in microseconds rather than milliseconds, and very simple to use uh, just in the fact that all of our commands, uh, whereas with uh, with SQL or our HBase commands or, or MongoDB, anything we've seen so far, there is some fairly complex structure to the queries uh, with our Redis commands, it's generally just um, the command itself followed by the key that we're either reading or writing from and the value. It's kind of those, those three elements are generally all we are uh, passing in or out of Redis. Uh, so simple commands, simple data structures, and as I mentioned before, very simple to access Redis over the uh, over the network, and that kind of comes at the expense of security, which we have to apply to our database uh, elsewhere, like in our uh, our uh, network ACLs and firewall rules and things like that. And uh, again, Redis is uh, typically configured as an in-memory database, uh, meaning that it's way faster, but all of your data goes away if the server crashes or is shut down. And also the size of your data is limited by the amount of memory in the server. So while we can periodically flush our memory to disk, uh, we're gonna experience some performance penalties for doing so. But generally that's not what we want to do with Redis anyway. Uh, Redis is all about quickly capturing, transforming, and transmitting data. And I wanna talk just a minute about two uh, use cases for Reddit, uh, Redis, not, not Reddit, uh, Redis. And one of the most popular uses of Redis is to use it as a cache that sits in front of some other database. And way back in our very first uh, night of class, uh, we had this slide here. And this, we were talking about how we've tried to, uh, kind of fix some of the problems with relational database management systems by doing things like scaling out to have many data, many relational database server uh, nodes in a cluster to improve performance. And then we talked about putting cache servers in front of those database servers so that when a web server or some other application server uh, sends a request for data that we've already fulfilled uh, one or more times in the past, these cache servers, instead of going and running that database query again, can just immediately return the answer. And uh, memcached uh, is a very popular solution to that, but Redis is also a very popular uh, solution for, for caching data. And uh, in fact, I mentioned that uh, our Redis server is running in uh, Amazon Elasticache, which is a caching service. And the two options for how Elasticache works is to either be configured as an MCache, uh, Memcached server or as a Redis server. So we have it configured uh, with Redis as, uh, as we're doing right now. But the basic idea here is that Anytime our web server or our application server needs to look something up in the database, so we might have uh, a Postgres or MongoDB or something like that as our actual authoritative data store, but anytime our application needs to look something up in the database, 
it first asks the cache server, and in this case, it would be a Redis server. And if Redis, Redis records every, and this is the way you would configure it, uh, Redis records every query that the application server or the web server asks, okay? And if it's, a, if it's a query that the application server has already asked in the past, Redis can just immediately give the response. And because we said, you know, Redis is so much faster than really any other DBMS, this might be hundreds or even thousands of times faster than we would be able to look this up in our actual, uh, you know, database, if it's Postgres or MongoDB or whatever. So if it can give the response, it does. And if it can't, we've only wasted a few millionths of a second asking Redis if it knows the answer. And if it doesn't know the answer, it's going to go ahead and pass that uh, query on to Postgres or whatever our actual database server is here, which may take, uh, you know, a few dozen milliseconds and then that will send the data back to the application server but then also send the answer back to the redis server so now if in a few seconds a few minutes a few hours whatever that same query is asked again redis can provide the answer in just you know a few microseconds instead of uh instead of many milliseconds so of course this data is going to get stale over time, right? Uh, we would have to consider, is it okay if the, if the answer that the web server is getting is a few minutes old, a few hours old, a few seconds old, right? Just depending on the business application we have here, our tolerance for stale data is going to be different, but we can configure Redis to expire this data that it's caching after some set period of time. So it's a little bit extra complexity. It's some extra steps in the process. But if we're getting, uh, if we have instances of the same data being accessed over and over again, it's one of these things that can uh, dramatically improve the performance of our application. So that's one very common application of Redis. And another uh, another use case that I would throw out there uh, is if you think about situations where we are writing data or data is coming into our system at a very high velocity, at a very high rate of speed, and we might not even need to capture all of this data long term, right? We're, we're capturing the data and we're doing some kind of processing. Maybe we're aggregating it and then dumping out some aggregate statistics, you know, once a second or once every five seconds or something like that. So if you think about, uh, and of course, I like self-driving cars as a, as a topic, but uh, this could really be any number of things, right? This could be sensors on an oil rig or Internet of Things devices or medical devices or, or, or whatever. But, uh, you know, if you've got this device that has, let's say, 100 sensors that are taking each taking 100 readings per second. So every 10 milliseconds, they're taking a, a reading of, uh, you know, whether it's the distance away it is from an obstacle or vibrations or speed or heat or uh, carbon monoxide levels or whatever, doing 100 readings per second. Well, if you have 100 sensors, each doing 100 readings per second, that's a 10,000 data points per second that we are generating, right? And that would be, even if it's small amounts of data, that's just a lot of transactions to be taking place. And that would pretty... Uh, pretty likely overwhelm a lot of database systems, but this is uh, well within the bounds of what a uh, Redis server would be able to intake, right? And so in a lot of these cases, you might need this level of granularity of your data to make a decision in that second, right? Think a self-driving car, you know, it's only got a fraction of a second to decide if it needs to slam on the brakes or make some kind of evasive maneuver or whatever. But 
after that particular point in time, having this granularity of 100 data points per second may not be useful anymore, right? So it may be a situation where our database needs to take in data extremely rapidly, but then we can aggregate that data up to the second level or the five seconds or 10 seconds or whatever level, and then store that uh, aggregated value in our persistent data store, right? So what we're going to be seeing uh, in the future in next week's lecture is that often uh, Redis is not going to be a standalone database. You're gonna have data coming into Redis, something is going to happen to it, and then it's going to be uh, going into some other database for persistent storage, or maybe the data just isn't needed anymore at all uh, after uh, your algorithm has done whatever needs to be done to the data. So, uh, you know, Redis is all about taking data in quickly, doing something, and then, then sending it out quickly. <laughs>